Hello there and welcome to the channel. Um, my name's Keith Mason, thanks for joining me. It does seem like an age since I've last posted, uh, but it's been about a month. So please forgive me. Uh, I know the YouTube channel um, algorithms won't be happy, um, but life's got in the way and sometimes that's how things go, right? But the purpose of this video is to tell you about how amazed I was with the... Oh, thank you very much indeed. I want to tell you about uh, how useful I found the uh, subject selection in Photoshop. I recently did a, um, a photo shoot with a couple of young ballerinas and uh, I took my uh, background uh, down so that I could uh, frame up nicely um, these ballerinas. Uh, and unfortunately, when there were two in the shot, the, um, my background wasn't wide enough. What I found was using content selection uh, in Photoshop can be really useful. I'm going to show you that in a minute. But let's start off with a little bit of update about what I've been doing. Firstly, uh, it's been cold here and um, I managed to take some uh, photographs from the inside of my conservatory uh, capturing sort of ice fronds uh, and I did some double exposures where I focused firstly uh, on the ice and then secondly uh, on the warm light on the building across the road and I thought that came across really quite effectively. Uh, I took a day out where I went down to, to London to do a little photo walk but I really quite like this picture of these four empty seats on a train. I don't know what it is about it. It's probably the texture of the seats and the fact that the, um, the trees in the background are, are nicely um, framed in the, in the window of the uh, train. I also had some fun um, at a barber shop uh, in, uh, what's it called? Which part of London is it? And it was just this really interesting combination of lights and reflections and um, depth in the picture. Uh, I also went wide and uh, I was using my 18mm to get this particular picture and got this picture of a cracked uh, window in this, I think it was a bank uh, that I was taking and uh, I got all these reflections uh, which created some nice bokeh. What else have I been doing? I've been working with the theatre company uh, who have been putting on a production of Sister Act and I went into the studio uh, where they were doing some rehearsals and then I went and shot the, the show itself to capture some slightly unusual uh, pictures. I, I really like this picture uh, of um, of the nun. Uh, it has a real sort of black narcissus feel to it. By contrast, you, you've got this picture uh, where the nuns are in, and I don't know if you know the story, they end up in a bar, uh, and the lighting was such that you've got this sort of really nice rainbow effect going down uh, onto the uh, jukebox. And again, I mean, with, with theatre photography, uh, the light is, is so important, and managing to get uh, this backlit nun praying. I've also been focusing on uh, details, um, and, I, and I took this picture of uh, just uh, sort of dew drops on the uh, car window um, with uh, light in the, uh, in the background and been playing around with some treatments so uh, this one I've made sort of a nice bluey green it gives a really nice nighttime feel and the bokeh is just fabulous on this uh, this is taken with my 56 mil Viltrox 1.4 lens and this is taken at 1.4 and and then I started having some challenges I went out one morning um, to take um, some pictures just with my 27 mil um, uh, prime lens which is one of my favorite um, Fujifilm lenses it's not as sharp as some of the others but it the the sort of focal length really suits me. I think it's 43 mil. Uh, and, you know, this is uh, a scene just outside my house. And I just really love it. And then I went out to a, lo a local park and I took a couple of pictures, turned the camera off, turned it back on again to take the next picture. And I got this alert. I didn't know what was wrong. It just said, turn the camera off, turn it on again. It kept on doing that, nothing. I googled it 
and uh, it said that maybe there is problems of the lens communicating with the camera body. Uh, I luckily had two bodies with me, so I took the, the 27mm off and put it on a different body, uh, and I got the same message. So it was obviously the lens, and it suggested that the problem was the connection of the lens to uh, the body, and took some recommendations about using some... Uh, contact cleaner and some uh, rubbing alcohol and neither of those made any difference. So I filled out a form on Fujifilm's um, website for the UK. Uh, I paid £108 for a repair. Uh, they sent me a box which was this big and inside that box there was another box that had Fujifilm written all over it and in that there was packaging and you ripped out which packaging you didn't need. You put the lens in and some, some paperwork. Then you had to put the Fujifilm box back in the original box and send it back. A few days later, I got, I got an email uh, back saying they had repaired the lens, the lens needed a new motor and also um, new lens elements. Um, I was really amazed that they, they've repaired this. now. I really haven't unboxed this yet, so I don't know if it's going to be okay, but I'm assuming that if they said it's okay, it's going to be okay. This is the box that comes inside the box so that the couriers don't know that it's Fujifilm. And if I can find the way in. Lots of packaging. There it is. My little baby Fujifilm 27mm. Just a lovely, lovely lens. £108 to repair it. I think the replacement would have been over 400, so I'm very pleased. Right, so I ended up that day switching to uh, my 18mm lens and I took a few uh, wide shots. Then I also went to a, a local park and tried to start uh, thinking about reflections. This is a picture which has really, um, a lot of people have responded to. It's some. Um, just some simple reeds in a park. It was a very still day and there was just a ripple on the, uh, on the water and it just really shouts tranquility and peace. Uh, and then we had some mist and I went out and, uh, and just the mist just gave us some beautiful opportunities for some really um, evocative sort of, um, I won't say uh, moody, uh, moody images, which I'm, I'm really quite pleased uh, with and um, quite happy that this lady was happy to have her picture taken walking across the bridge. OK, so um, let us jump into the computer and show you how I have been using subject select uh, in Photoshop. So here's the challenge. You've got uh, a background which has been set up on an A-frame. You've got two people in the picture and unfortunately parts of their dress overlaps and obviously if I was to uh, crop the picture wouldn't have a particularly good um, composition overall. Um, it's not what I was going for. One thing that I was pleased uh, that I did before I started shooting this uh, uh, before I started shooting this set, I took a picture of the background, sorry, I took a picture of the setup with my, um, uh, with my backdrop. Now, this is helpful because now I can use Photoshop's sub subject select to cut the ballerinas out and then drop that original backdrop picture behind them uh, to, to remake the picture. So I'll show you how I can do that. So first off, I am going to do subject select and fingers crossed it picks up the ballerinas properly. Okay, and so it seems to have picked up the, um, the ballerinas quite well. 
So I'm just going to copy and paste them. Now I know subject select uh, is, is a pretty standard thing now in most uh, photo um, editing softwares, but it's just so useful. Uh, right, so you can see here, uh, I've just managed to have them cut out. But this is where um, having this background uh, available has been useful to me. So I'm, gonna, um, I'm going to select it. I'm going to select a little bit of the floor. Copy it and then paste it as a layer in this picture. Now, it doesn't look so good. First thing is Command T. And this becomes a layer which I can move around. So what I want to do is make sure that the background co covers the width of the frame. So now I'm just going to change the opacity so I can see what I'm doing here. Because basically now I want to line up this image with where the, the image underneath is. So that's fine. And I'm going to move my um, subjects on top of it. And it doesn't, it looks a bit fake at this point. So uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to remove the floor on the layer which has the backdrop. So make sure I'm selecting on the backdrop. I'm just going to backspace it and that will delete it. Now I do have a problem that I've got um, this light leg in it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select and use the lasso there and I am going to use generative fill. So um, I'm going to use content aware fill. Now if I'm lucky in one go that will uh, fill in that that leg. Let's see what it does. Essentially this green space here is everything that the content aware fill will use to decide what it might use. And obviously what we don't want is a whole bunch of ballerinas uh, to be considered as being source material for the content fill. So basically I'm just going to delete the green space up here. So it's just looking at the parquet floor to make the fill. So it's thinking and there it seems to have done a good job over here. So I'm going to say OK. And that will create a new layer with the, um, um, the content fill. So that's going to just appear here, I think. There you go. You can turn that on and off. So that's, that's done a pretty good job. Um, so that's lo all looking pretty good. It looks a bit fake in this middle area here because if I turn that layer off, you can see that you've got sort of uh, darkening areas and some shadows and stuff like that. So what I can do is I can take a very light brush, uh, a very light eraser, um, and sort of pretty light flow and just sort of if I pick the right layer just sort of paint around here just to bring in elements of that extra texture that was behind so if I if I turn off um, that layer you can see that I am sort of wiping around this area here just to try and reveal some of that extra detail that was in that background 
uh, layer. So if I turn that back on, you can see, oh, there, you can see that sort of coming through here. So that's just going to add a little bit of extra sort of texture that is going to make it look like it was one shot. And there you go. Just save it and it will come back into your Lightroom and then happy days. So content aware fill for the leg and particularly subject select can be a really powerful um, a tool uh, in Photoshop. So there you go. Thank you very much for watching. I really hope this sort of somewhat cobbled together video has been useful or interesting or I just hopefully a little bit of entertaining. And uh, if it is, if you could please give it a thumbs up, maybe think about subscribing. Uh, and uh, yeah, I'd like to thank you for watching and uh, hope to see you on the next one. And until then, thanks for watching and bye for now.